Welcome along fellow time travelers and strange historians. This time around we're going to check out some of my favorite photos of the Dakota apartment building in New York City. You're going to see some really cool snaps, some of which you may have never seen before. Before I begin, please like and share the show and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Now please join me around the campfire. This is a snap that I took from across the street from the Dakota. I was on the balcony of an apartment that was once owned by Carly Simon, located in the Oliver Cromwell. In fact, I took a lot of photos from here. And this is a view that almost no one ever sees or associates with the Dakota. In the foreground is the south facade facing West 72nd Street. And dead center at the bottom, you can see the entry to the building. And looking up, you can see the entire wrought iron railing that runs along the seventh floor. And you can see the Oriel windows, which extend from the second floor all the way up to the eighth floor, which is in the attic. And you can see they are capped with ornate copper finials. You can see stone dormer windows along the eighth floor, and copper dormer windows along the ninth floor, and along the sides of the center gable, all of which are within the mansard roof. On the far left, Along the west side of the building, you can see the facade is of red brick. And we're going to talk more about that in a little while. From this view, you can see the incredibly picturesque roof with dormer windows along the gables. I mean, seriously, is this not the loveliest roof you've ever seen? It's like a little European village on top of a building in the middle of New York City. And you can see numerous stone finials, corbel chimneys, iron railings, and that the roof is trimmed with copper. Above the pyramidal shaped structure on the east side hovers an American flag, which has also been the home of many celebrities. To the east is Central Park and beyond that is the Upper East Side. In fact, Paul McCartney owns an apartment that can be seen from here. And I could talk about that in another show. This is another snap that I took. It shows the rarely photographed northeast side of the Dakota. You know, I kind of feel sorry for the north side of the Dakota because it kind of gets ignored. Right? I mean, you've probably seen a million photos of the Dakota and nobody ever seems to want to take photos from here. Well, I love it. And hopefully now you will love it too because it really is awesome. As you can see, the wrought iron railing on the seventh floor continues to wrap around to the north side. In fact, that apartment up on the seventh floor is a sort of flipped version of the one that John Lennon purchased on the southeast side of the building. And along the second floor continues the round-headed windows with the terracotta band above them. And you can see assorted balconies and balconettes. And as you can see, dead center is an interesting opening that extends from the ground floor all the way up to the sixth floor. And no one really knows why on earth it was designed that way. Some have said it was to allow light and airflow into the courtyard. But come on, <laughs> it's a courtyard. It doesn't need a slither cut through the north side of the building for light and airflow to be able to enter it. So, I'm not buying that. Looking up towards the top, you can see two center gables. Now look along the very bottom. Here's where things get kind of strange. See below the ground floor level, into the light well? There are red bricks. Yes, those are red bricks. Unlike the buff yellow bricks along the south and east and north facades. Let's take a closer look at that. This is a snap that I took of the light well from the northwest side of the Dakota. And to the left is West 73rd Street. That's a pretty deep light well, isn't it? And what's up with the red bricks? It's a total mystery. Now, we know that Edward C. Clark, the builder of the Dakota, died in 1882, halfway through construction. And so maybe his family was getting kind of chintzy with the money and said, hey, Enough with those expensive buff yellow bricks, huh? Can't you use those cheap red bricks like everyone else? Now, it's possible that happened. Or maybe they just couldn't manufacture enough buff yellow bricks, or maybe they didn't have enough when they got to this point of construction. Or maybe they figured, it's a dry well on the north side of the building. No one's ever going over there. It's so far away. Who's going to walk along West 73rd Street? Who cares? Forget about it. What do you think? It's anyone's guess. All right. 
Now here is where people might say I'm a bit strange. And of course you would never think that, right? But some people might. Well, this is a snap that I took along the light well on the northeast side of the Dakota. Check it out. They used buff yellow brick along the inside of the dry well on the east side. And so if the thought about using red brick was, who cares, who's going to see it, right, forget about it, then why did they use the buff yellow brick on that one area when nobody on earth, except you and me, are ever going to see it? It's a mystery. Why do you think they suddenly stopped using the buff yellow bricks and started using the red bricks? Let me know in the comments below. Now check this out. The fine folks who live and run the Dakota certainly know who I am by now. I've been inside and outside enough times, taking photographs of every square inch, and so yeah, no doubt they're kind of used to me by now. No doubt they've got my picture hanging up in security. Just kidding. Everything's cool. Everything's Jake. But there are some things that even I can't get away with. Well, maybe I could. Either way, I wanted to know how deep the light well was that surrounds the Dakota on all three sides because there are different levels in different areas. But there was no way I was going to jump down there or lower a tape measure. So I did the next best thing. What do you think that was? Come on, think about it. If you wanted to know how deep this light well was, what would you do? Yep, you got it. That's exactly what I did. See, great minds think alike. I counted the bricks. And then I multiplied the number of bricks by the size of the bricks. Clever, right? Anyway, I hope this photo didn't bore you to death. I think stuff like this is cool, and maybe you think stuff like this is cool too. And if you do, kindly let me know in the comments below. This is a snap that I took from the alleyway along the west side of the Dakota. Once again, this is a rarely seen view and often ignored by Dakota fans, but not anymore. Clearly the most obvious thing to notice is all the red bricks. And you might be asking, why? Why didn't they continue to use the buff yellow bricks on this side too? I don't know. It's a mystery. Now you might be saying, duh, it's the back of the building. Who cares? Who's gonna see it? It's just facing another building. Why waste the moolah? Well, that might be the sort of thing that one can say when looking at the Dakota today. But when the Dakota was built, there wasn't a building on the west side of it. In fact, it seems unlikely that there ever would be. That is because Edward C. Clark also owned that plot of land. You see, below grade, he had electric generators for the Dakota and also the townhouses along West 73rd Street that he owned. And above grade was a private park for the Dakota and those townhouse residents. It was called Clark Park. And so now that you know that, what you think? Why didn't they make the west side of the Dakota beautiful? Or at least use buff yellow brick? It's a strange mystery. As you can see, the west side has no ornamentation at all. But... In the early days, there were awnings, which kind of look nice, and I'll show those in another show. By the way, where I was standing when I took this snap was in front of the delivery entrance to the Dakota. Legend has it that John Lennon would often sneak in and out of this way if there were too many fans outside the main entry on West 72nd Street. And you know something? He should have done that more often, huh? Especially on December 8th, 1980, when he clearly could see from his limousine that there were a few fans hanging outside the main entry to the building. I don't know what the hell he was thinking. The whole thing's crazy to me. This is a snap that I took from the Dakota's entry at night. In fact, this is what it looked like the night John Lennon came home on December 8, 1980, and on previous nights as well. You can see that charming lantern lighting up the ornate groin ceiling and the walls, all laid up in beautiful buff yellow brick. And this, of course, is the main entry to the Dakota. And whenever I stand there, especially at night, when no one else is around, and I do that often, and I have done that throughout my life, you know what I do? I imagine 
horse-drawn carriages entering and exiting the Dakota. I do. I imagine them going in and out. And in my mind, I hear that cataclop, 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 cataclop. It's pretty cool. And so perhaps if you ever find yourself in front of the Dakota and you are standing in this exact spot at night, you may wish to do the same. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. Before I continue, can you please do me a favor and like and share the show and kindly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. Here are some snaps that I took from the Oliver Cromwell of the Oriel window on the 8th floor of the southeast corner of the Dakota, which is located above John Lennon's former bedroom. For those who don't know, by the way, an Oriel window is a form of bay window, but it protrudes from the main wall of a building, but it doesn't reach the ground. And as you can see, it's incredibly beautiful and allows a lot more light to enter into the space. And these Oriel windows offer incredible views of Central Park. Here are some snaps that I took of the ornate railing along the south, east, and north side of the Dakota. They don't change, by the way. A lot of people think that they're all different, but they're not. They're all the same. As you know, Poseidon holds a significant position among the 12 Olympians in the ancient Greek religious and mythological traditions. Poseidon governs the realms of the sea, the storms, the earthquakes, and horses. Gotta throw horses in there. And his Roman equivalent was, and likely still is, Neptune. And so you can say that this is the face of Poseidon and or Neptune with his sea monsters. In fact, which do you prefer? Don't worry, this is not an official poll. You're not going to piss off Poseidon. You're not going to piss off Neptune. This is all casual. Let me know in the comments below which do you prefer, Poseidon or Neptune. This photo was taken along the north side, as you can see from the red bricks. And this one was taken along the south side. And I took this one along the east side. This is a photo that I took dead center of the east side of the Dakota along the ground floor. It's facing Central Park West. Pretty far out, right? How cool would it be to own an apartment in the Dakota and have that cool balcony? Well, yeah, that was probably kind of groovy in the 1800s, but probably not so much today, yeah? In fact, if the owner of this apartment can contact me, I'd like to ask him or her, or whatever words people are allowed to use these days, how often they have stepped out upon that balcony. I'm thinking not a lot. And here is another angle straight on. By the way, to date, I don't believe anyone has ever determined who are meant to be represented in those sculptured profiles along the top. They most certainly are not Isaac Singer or his last wife Isabella, because those are along the south side entry. And it's certainly not Isaac Singer and any of his countless wives or girlfriends. It's also not a depiction of Edward C. Clarke or Henry Janeway Hardenberg. So, it's another strange Dakota mystery. If you know how to solve it, kindly let me know in the comments below. Looking up, you can see that the apartment above has a balcony of its own, which I assume is also rarely, if ever, used. Which is kind of a shame, huh? So let me ask you, what would you do if you lived in one of those apartments? Would you sit on the balcony and say hello to people passing by? Perhaps offer them a tall glass of cold lemonade, as if you were a southern lady or gentleman. Kindly let me know in the comments below. This is a snap that I took from the sidewalk along the east side of the Dakota. Most people walk along the Dakota and they don't notice there are a lot of really awesome details that are sort of hidden in plain sight. You just need to know where to look. And so looking up from here, you can see that grotesque face with slithering hair and beard in that unlikely spot. And so it's stuff like this that makes architectural history fun. And it's why watching shows like this that could actually be good for you, it's time well spent. Because it kind of trains you to increase your powers of observation. I mean, a zillion people have looked at the Dakota in real life and in photos. And I think I can confidently say that you have already seen 99% more details than they ever had. Which is kind of cool. This final image was taken from across West 72nd Street, and you can see the entire south side facade and almost the entire west side facade with its red bricks. And this view kind of shows how the Dakota looks like it was sliced in half like a cake. But beyond that, it really is a fantastic building, isn't it? And I have so many photos that I want to share with you. And so I think the next show I will do will include a lot of interior photos, including many of the apartments. So what do you think of the Dakota? 
If you were rolling in dough, would you live in a place like that? You know I would. By the way, I don't know who took the last photo that I have shown in the show. So if you do, will you kindly let me know so I can respectfully give them the credit they deserve. At this point, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this adventure to check out some of my favorite photos of the Dakota. Kindly remember to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell, because there will be more shows like this one, and I hope you check those out too. Please check out the links below to learn how to support my research and productions. Specifically, I'd really appreciate it if you could become a member of my channel and or join me on Patreon. You could also leave a super thanks in the comments below. Kindly be kind to all non-human animals, and please don't eat them. They don't like that. Remember, for the benefit of compassion for all living things and their own health, all of the beetles and other brilliant people throughout history chose a plant-based diet. And please do yourself a favor and go to a local shelter and adopt a cat or a dog. You and they will be very glad that you did. Until next time, I wish you safe travels on all your journeys.